For over 30 years now, Michael Jackson has been the top target for the international press. But almost never with objective, fair journalistic pieces, scandals, fake news, omissions, biased information and throughout exaggerations have been fed to the general audience for decades, creating a false image of Jackson that resembles very little to the real artist and the man. Morbid curiosity sells, and it doesn't matter if it's all lies. When it came to Jackson, the constructed idea of Wacko Jacko generated billions of dollars for the media, and the trend is still ongoing. If anything, Jackson's death has been fueling even more fake stories, as both in the US and in the UK there is no law protecting the dead, a dead person cannot be defended from defamation, nor slander. Which means that anyone can say whatever they please without risk of any consequences. This is the foundation of the false documentary Leaving Neverland, about two people whose allegations and inconsistencies have already been thrown out of court twice. Wade Robson and James Safechuck can promote their slanderous documentary only because their target, Michael Jackson, is dead, and therefore they won't have any repercussions in their search for a multimillion dollar compensation. If the media were just and fair, honest, and genuinely investigative, people like Robson and Safechuck would not have any platform to broadcast their lies. Both accusers are self-admitted perjurers and their allegations are contradictory and financially motivated. No serious, honest journalist would ever want to touch accusers tainted by such issues. Instead, since the media have actively been slandering Michael Jackson since the 80s, and Michael Jackson is the target of the documentary, these two false accusers have found allies in the press, an international festival, and two television networks. Channel 4 is UK public service broadcaster specializing in salacious, gossip-oriented content. Channel 4 has great interest in exploiting Michael Jackson's name again, it had already happened in 2009 with another dubious documentary which generated massive revenues, and it's likely they hope to repeat that same kind of success. Even before then, in 2007, Channel 4 had broadcasted another controversial and heavily biased documentary about Jackson, misleadingly titled What Really Happened. The film was so one-sided that an independent viewer, at the time, described it as it follows, it makes the Bashir piece look almost impartial. Unreal. I was disgusted. Just like Leaving Neverland, Jacques Peretti's movie does its best to only offer a voice to Jackson's detractors, accumulating all possible lies spread about the artist over the years and trying very hard to assassinate its character. It's also important to notice that one of Channel 4's current heroes is alleged pedophile hunter Stinson Hunter. In 2014, a man exposed by the internet vigilante killed himself days after police had questioned him. Hunter caused controversy by posting videos of his meetings online and has been criticized by police for his methods. Unsurprisingly enough, days before it was announced that the documentary Leaving Neverland would be aired at Sundance Festival 2019, on Twitter Stinson Hunter started engaging in nasty and false allegations against Michael Jackson, spreading fake and debunked news to his followers. Hunter also aggressively and vulgarly harassed, insulted, reported, and blocked whoever offered actual evidence and official reports and documents, calling him out for his lies. In 2016, Stinson Hunter was accused by his ex-girlfriend of being the most manipulating person in the world and urinating on her clothes in a bitter revenge video. Immediately before it was announced that Leaving Neverland will be broadcasted in UK by Channel 4, the same network Hunter works for, Hunter began his crusade against Michael Jackson by spreading fake news that can be easily debunked simply by reading official files and reports. He also repeatedly taunted Paris Jackson with extremely offensive tweets about her father. Another alleged hero for victims of sexual abuse currently spouting venom and spreading fake news about Michael Jackson is the Twitter profile linked to an open secret, the American documentary film directed by Amy J. Berg exposing child sexual abuse in the film industry in California. Just like Hunter, an open secret seems to be using social media as a perfect platform for smearing Michael Jackson around the same time leaving Neverland's inclusion in the Sundance Festival was announced. 
Not only an open secret disregards over 10 years of investigation by police and FBI, two grand juries and a court of law that clear Jackson of any crime by calling the star paid a vile, something they could not do if Jackson was alive, but also promotes fake news spread by A.J. Benza, here used as a source. Who is A.J. Benza? A.J. Benza is a gossip columnist exposed by New York Times during the Harvey Weinstein scandal, at the end of December 2017, as part of the complicity machine providing Weinstein with cover, as accusations of sexual misconduct piled up for decades. In the expose, Benza is mentioned as the man who stated he would publish sensational stories about other celebrities as a favor to Weinstein, in a bid to keep media focused elsewhere. Michael Jackson was explicitly named in the article. A quick Google search is enough to discover that, through the years, A.J. Benza, now one of the sources for an open secret, published several articles about Michael Jackson, none of which positive. Going back in time, we find out that, in 1995, the same A.J. Benza expressed anger that Margaret Maldonado, mom of two of Michael's nephews, had severed ties with him during a defamatory comment Benza made about Jackson in another article. Benza wrote that Margaret would often intervene to keep derogatory stories about Jackson from being aired or printed, but now since Margaret has cut ties with him, Benza ends the article with a threat to MJ. I'm gonna miss you baby. But Michael is gonna miss you more. Ready, aim, fire. Benza also stated that he had a hand in breaking the Geordie Chandler story in 1993, and that he had a direct line to June Chandler, the mother of the alleged victim. He likened the endless Jackson stories to a faucet with no off valve. In a blog post written the day after Michael passed, Benza goes into detail about how he and Linda Stasi were amongst the first to pour gasoline on the Jackson Chandler story in 1993. Again, he states he had direct contact with June Chandler, and Latoya Jackson too. A Chicago Tribune article about Benza reported he was making $250,000 a year by 1996, mostly by selling stories to hard copy and a current affair. It's already well known amongst Jackson's supporters how much hard copy was manipulating the narrative considering the allegations against Michael Jackson. The aforementioned Linda Stasi, currently working for New York Daily News, has written her share of inflammatory articles about Michael over the years, and helped steer the one side and biased Chandler story in 1993 along with Benza. This is the tenor of Stasi's journalism against Jackson. Going back to the New York Times article about Weinstein, it's reported that Weinstein would grant business perks to those who covered for him. Benza got a book deal. Going back to one of the rumors spread by an open secret via AJ Benza on Twitter, it's important to notice that the fluids theory was debunked by the same prosecution that investigated Jackson. The floor scent stains were not from semen, as stated by the prosecution expert from the 2005 trial. This is only one of the many examples of fake news recently spread by the combo Benza and Open Secret on social media. So, this is the material that an open secret uses to smear Michael Jackson while a slanderous mockumentary about him is about to be released. And why can an open secret not be trusted? According to journalist Charles Thompson, Ray Fitzwalter Award for Investigative Journalism, two highly commended weekly reporter of the year, local hero, highly commended, at British Journalism Awards. The news is confirmed by several outlets, then lawyers for accuser Michael Egan have admitted to two of the formerly accused, Garth Ansier and David Newman, that the allegations against them were untrue. In connection with signed admissions, Lawyers Jeff Herman of Florida and Mark Gallagher of Hawaii paid what Ansiers representatives described as a seven-figure settlement to the two men, whom the lawyers now admit were wrongly accused. That does not mean that everything reported in the movie An Open Secret was false, but certainly the brand has serious problems in terms of credibility. Even more, since it associates itself with someone of the likes of A.J. Benza, part of Weinstein's complicity machine in the media. Yet, an open secret, in perfect sync with Benza, 
blocks everyone who tries to present real evidence and correct their fake news with factual information about Michael Jackson. An open secret recently spread further fake news about alleged bot accounts run and paid by the Michael Jackson estate which, of course, it's not true. What is the connection between an open secret and leaving Neverland? Easy. Lawyers Manley Stewart and Finaldi, who worked for accuser Michael Egan, are also James Safechuck and Wade Robson's lawyers. Wade Robson and James Safechuck are the two alleged victims protagonists of the new documentary, both conveniently accused Jackson posthumously, both conveniently came to terms with the alleged abuse at the same time, decades later, both aim at a huge monetary gain. Meanwhile, it is also important to notice that there is another documentary that was presented at Sundance Festival 2019, titled Untouchable. The subject? Harvey Weinstein. The buzz and publicity around this documentary? Practically zero. Once again very conveniently, all eyes, and news, are aimed at leaving Neverland, the slanderous documentary against Michael Jackson. Notice the tone used by the New York Times while speaking about Weinstein. Not only the article doesn't even mention the documentary about Weinstein, but his name is never paired with words such as abuser, alleged, charged, or anything of that sort. All the while, Michael Jackson gets called a pedophile in the press despite having been cleared by the most excruciating and detailed investigation of recent times. We call these double standards. And what about HBO, set to broadcast the slanderous documentary about Michael Jackson in the US? Only a few days ago, the network had no problem broadcasting the movie The Ghost Writer by director Roman Polanski, who pleaded guilty to the charge of unlawful sexual intercourse with a minor for the sexual assault of 13-year-old Samantha Gailey, after the grand jury charged him with five charges, rape by use of drugs, perversion, sodomy, lewd and lascivious act upon a child under 14, furnishing a controlled substance to a minor. HBO also broadcasts or works with several personalities accused of sexual misconduct in the past two years, James Franco, Kevin Spacey, Russell Simmons, Jeremy Piven, Charlemagne the God, Jeffrey Tambor, Tom Sizemore, T.J. Miller. This is the double standard the media have been using with Michael Jackson for decades, the biggest target is perfect to deflect from actual, real issues and predators. Meanwhile, millions of dollars were spent investigating Michael Jackson, more than for a serial killer. He was totally vindicated, two failed grand jury hearings, ten years of police and FBI investigation resulting in no evidence of any wrongdoing, acquitted of 14 criminal charge by an all-white conservative jury, four dismissed posthumous hearings. The Jackson investigation was extremely accurate. These are the agencies and requests mentioned in the FBI files. Despite the fake news and debunked gossip still going on with the cooperation of several tabloids, none of these agencies has ever found anything even remotely criminal against Mr. Jackson.